Hey Crafty Peeps, Tegan here from Fits and Lola and today it's a whole new video. Hi! <laughs> I'm going to try out this monthly vlog thing and please excuse the um, earpiece. I will work on the volume of some point because without this it sounds echoey in here because I have absolutely nothing on the wall. I will get to that. But I'm going to try this vlogging thing and I'm going to go through what has been happening lately in my home. And as you can see, it involves some plants. So I have picked up the plant bug, it is official, and I will tell you how it all began right now. <laughs> so back in, I think it was April, late April, I went to a macrame workshop. So I had the pleasure of meeting Mel from Miko Macrame and she showed us how to make a wall hanging. I took my mom with me and we had an amazing time. I learned so much. I'd already tried to um, make macrame myself with a couple of kits that I had received and I was horrible at it. I had no, one, no idea, I couldn't understand anything. So thank you Mel at Miko Macrame. That was just an amazing workshop and I learned so much and I have actually just gone nuts ever since. <laughs> so I made the wall hanging, came home birthday came around. So my nana and grandpa bought me this gorgeous black um, plant stand and it was my brother's task to get me a plant to go in it. So I had a bit of a look around and realised, okay, so some plants are actually toxic to animals and I have to be careful because if it's in Lola, they're my two ragdoll cats if you don't know. And I thought, oh, maybe we'll start with the spider plant. So the spider plant, easy plant, looks absolutely gorgeous, totally reminds me of the 70s. And I think it would be the way to go. So I said to my brother, can you get me a spider plant? So you, I get the plant holder and he gets a spider plant. It comes in a big hanging, you know, plastic pot. And I thought, perfect. I went to go put it in the pot. Way too small. Oh my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> so from there, I decided I'm just going to have to get another plant to go into that spot. So I went on a Google again and found the parlor palm and I thought, perfect, that's what I'm going to do. I would like to point this all out. This happened only two to three weeks ago. <laughs> so since then, I took a trip to Bunnings and grabbed myself um, because I wanted to make a um, plant hanger, Exhibit A. So I picked myself up some um, macrame cord from Bunnings. So this is a three millimeter. This is what I use for this um, particular plant holder. And you know what, for six bucks, it's a bloody bargain. And I had a pattern from a book that I also got for my birthday uh, from my mother-in-law. So this is macrame, The Craft of Creative Nodding in Your Home by Fanny Zedenius. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Fanny has some amazing um, diagrams in here, lots of like little tutorials and tips and tricks, um, has the exact patterns to make plant hangers, wall hangings, um, a garland, there's even a massive curtain in there which I would love but I certainly do not have the room or time for that. Um, not the, you know, cats will destroy it in like two moments. So I was like set on making, so this plant hanger is from this book so I'm super duper excited that I finished it. Anyway, so I went to Bunnings, picked up my um, macrame cord, picked up my parlor palm, and then my son before I left. Can I have a plant? Sure, sure, absolutely, child. Of course you can. <laughs> so he got a peperomia. This is a peperomia moonlight, and it is absolutely stunning, and I think it looks really, really good in the hanger. So once it's, um, I feel that it's established enough, it can go into his bedroom and we'll probably like pop it into the ceiling. And I also bought some cat grass as well because um, his story, Mr. Fitz, this idiot, right here actually, come here, Fitzy. Ah, ah, ah. Oh my God, like seriously, I brought the spider plant down and he's already gone to it. Oi, do you mind? Excuse me. So if I ever want fits not do anything, I spray him. <laughs> or just do this and it scares the crap out of me. <laughs> anyway, so um, exactly what was happening there. So Fitz would um, constantly go over to the spider plant and nibble on it. And it got to the point of, okay, I'm going to have to move it out of the way because um, I think he's going to destroy it. 
Turns out after a little bit of um, Googling and YouTubing, I found that, um, wait, fix. Yeah, you. He's currently eating my pile of palm. So this cat grass is not working. Anyway, so I bought the cat grass to deter him from eating the spider plant and the pile of palm. <sighs> anyway, so he ended up pulling the roots out of the cut grass instead. Oh, by the way, sorry, let me trap back. So the whole the whole thing with the spider plant was after a bit of Googling and YouTube, I actually found out that spider plants give cats hallucinations. So Fitz is a little bit of a druggy cat and kept going back, whereas Lola would just kind of like sniff it and move on. That's what you get when you get two different cats. Anyway. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so now we've got the pile of barn, which isn't too bad. And like, yes, he is chewing the crap out of it right now as we speak, but it's actually not all that bad. So he doesn't get any hallucinations and it's not toxic. So he should be right. So, um, that was my first trip to Bunnings. <laughs> and for those who aren't in Australia, Bunnings is a health store slash nursery slash craft haven. <laughs> um, I took a trip to Bunnings today. Um, because I needed to get one of these. I've started to, um, my spider plants started to get some brown tips. I wasn't quite sure what was happening, so I've pruned off those um, plants or those um, stems and um, got myself a moisture and pH reader so I can um, understand my plants a little bit more. And while I was there, Look, I really can't help myself. So I've got this gorgeous spotted plant and it's um, the, the trio, or what are they calling it? A triple splash? Triple splash it's called. Anyway, so I'll grab that. Might have to hide it from my husband because he's got no idea. And also this little terrarium from um, Bunnings as well for Jensen because look, I can't deny that little child of mine <laughs> plants. If he wants a plant, he can have a plant. <laughs> Um, and while I was there, I grabbed myself some more macrame core because look, I might make some more, I'm not sure yet. Um, we've got a four and a three millimeter. Now, the plan. So this wall behind me is actually bare and it's huge, it's a massive wall. So this is kind of like a dining area. So I'm sitting on a dining table right now and I have this gorgeous um, uh, snow season grey paint. Um, all throughout the house and it's quite warming and everything so I think a lot of plants and a lot of pictures are actually going to brighten up the place. So I've had a look at some Protea um, pictures, there's like a set of three on Temple and Webster um, which I'm like pretty set on getting <laughs> and then I'll just fill out the wall a little bit and then what I want to do is put on some plant hangers but not the traditional ones that where they hang from the ceiling, I want one that hangs from the wall and then the plant kind of so it hang, hangs like this and the plant kind of sits here at the bottom. So that would be a dream come true if I could just have one on each side. And then just a heap of these kind of like plants. So I don't know if I want to get like a virus tail or a baby tears or one of the you know, ones that drip down. I have got a little bit mad on my Pinterest, to be honest. So that's the start of my plant and macrame journey. <laughs> also I had to, you know, go get like little little watering cans and, and what have you. Oh, I forgot. So um, with this particular plant hanger that I made here from Fanny's book, it actually doesn't have a ring, which I was like really excited about because I didn't know if I wanted to have, um, you know, like wooden um, rings and then am I going to be the same one? Are they all going to be the same as the beads that I've got? So it, that was kind of like a bit of a bonus that I was able to find something without, without that. Anyway, it's so hard to find these wooden rings unless you can like buy it from, a, I don't know. I don't even know where you're getting from. I've literally looked everywhere and found one person on eBay around the corner from me and I kind of like, mm. So when I went to Bunnings today, I found these metal rings. It's literally just a giant key ring. And look, it'll do the exact same thing. So depending how crafty I feel like getting, I might make a um, couple of macrame plant hangers and put them up for sale. I'm not 100% sure yet. So I did also make another macrame hanging with some leftover from a kit that I wasn't quite sold on. So I kind of like unraveled it and then made use the rest because I already kind of made a little something with it and then um, made something completely different out of Fanny's um, book. So I, I love it. It's actually hanging up in the kitchen. I'll probably will move it though because we want to get something of a picture in there. A nice long one because <laughs> My husband put a pizza up and he put it way too high. Walk into a kitchen and then, you know, walk into the kitchen, hit you're the wall. <laughs> I could 
really my heart was. So I'm like, can we take that down and maybe put it on a different wall? <laughs> so that's the plan anyway. So while this has all been happening, I have been doing some crafting, a little bit of designing here and there. So the one thing that I have been showing on my Instagram quite a bit lately is my hexagon blanket. So voila these are huge but like take two seconds to make so i'm using um wool in the games crazy sexy wool this is the hot punk pink it's absolutely gorgeous it's so squishy and so light and it's going to be heavy as hell when i put it all together um my first my first um thought process with this blanket was i'm going to make 49 of them and make a seven by seven hexagon blanket it's magic net. but because i'm an idiot <laughs> and realise that when they're sewn together, they sit like this. So I've actually got half, half a hexagon space over here. Seriously, an idiot. <laughs> so I've now gone from seven by seven to six, four, six, four, six, four. And I will need to also make um, some half, oop. also need to make some half hexagons. So the half hexagons will kind of go at the end of those rows of four. So kind of like four and a half, kind of a thing, nearly five. And then a quarter hexagon. Yeah, quarter. So this little bit here goes, it's so hard to show. show. So this bit here, this, this area here <laughs> is like a quarter hexagon. So I've kind of worked out one on how to do it, but I'm not, not quite sold on it yet. So I'm going to keep making my half hexagons. I've got about um, eight to go. And then I'll need, I think it works out to be about 10 of those. And then I'm going to pick on my border. So I'm going to do a, like a black border with all this as well. And here's just one more colour. I have like seven colours, but this one's a Sherpa Blue. How gorgeous is that? I will need to, what I'm going to actually do is probably, it's going to be pain in the butt bit, is actually sew in all of these ends on the outside keep the insides open until I sew them together because I would like them all to be facing the same way. The only issue I'm going to have is it's not going to be identical for those um, quarter and half pieces because I'm going to be turning them. Not the end of the world though but as long as the front of all of the main hexagons look the same I am happy as Larry. So that was just one kind of project that I've got on the go. I've kind of written the pattern up as well and I will probably do a couple of tutorials on how to do a half and a quarter pattern. Fitz is doing mum 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 because he ate too much parlor palm. Didn't you mate? <laughs> Please excuse me. I cannot tell you how disgusting that was. <sighs> Fitzgerald. <laughs> so that was like a whole parlor palm leaf. Because he's an idiot. <laughs> but he eating it. He choked on it. And now he's running around like an idiot. <laughs> the galloping horse, as, I can, as we call him. Um, where was I? <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to be doing a... Um, I will be doing a video on the half and the quarter um, hexagon pieces because I think they're quite hard to do. Um, but hopefully with the tutorial and a couple of diagrams because I'm actually trying to... I'm getting used to doing that. I'm adding more on my patterns. Um, make it easier for beginners anyway to be able to make this blanket. And you know what, it doesn't have to be like the crazy sexy wool. I know how expensive that is and there is quite a lot. Are you kidding me? You're eating the spider plant now? You freaking idiot. Did you not learn? I'm moving on from the hexagon blanket because I'm losing my crap and I think I'm, I'm, I'm losing track and I think you know where I'm going with it. Anyway, I'm going to move on to another project that I have kind of finished but not finished like I have finished making the bulk of it I just don't know how I want to finish it so it is this gorgeous cow using 16 ply yarn that I picked up from um, Rooster Teeth's Handmade and it's using my new loop stitch variation um, he's going to be galloping up in town because he's getting just down with me for so much better now it's, it's wonderful for the video welcome to my house um, so lipstick variation, which I've actually posted a video on how to make on um, the channel. So you can probably find that here. I'm still learning how to do these, so sorry if it's not the right area. If not, it'll be here. <laughs> um, so I don't know how to finish it. I don't know if I want to, because um, at the moment I've just got this stupid little um, slip stitch. And look, I'm not a fan. I think I'm going to um, do one more half repeat because I've kind of finished on the same um, two rows. 
I'll do one more half repeat so it's on the wrong side and then I will snip it and do a whip stitch. I think that's the best and probably seamless way of doing it and then you can wear it anyway without having to think, oh, should this be the back, should this be the front, oh no. Um, sorry, I'm with that one. I'm not quite sure where I want to do it, but yeah. So with that one, I've actually done a diagram. I've got a video and it'll be a written pattern as well. So I'm really, really excited about that. So once I've finished it and just finalized it last bit, I'll send it off to test it hopefully next week or so. I hate putting timelines on myself, but in all honesty, I've been sitting on this one for a couple of weeks and I really should have put it out already. <laughs> so in terms of projects, that's all I've really got at the moment. I've really been, I've, I've taken a bit of a step back recently. I don't know why, but it's just um, what, what I've done pretty much since my surgery. And I've just been taking it easy and not really pushing myself, except when it comes to plants and macrame, because I've just gone absolutely insane with it. <laughs> so recently with my whole new tech editing and grading experience, I've kind of reached out to a couple of people and I have been doing a couple of pattern tech editing and one grader, one grading, which I hope went well. I haven't actually heard any feedback yet, but I hope it's um, good and it worked out. If you need any tech editing or grading services, hi, I'm here. <laughs> Just look up Fizzle Lola on Instagram and you can also go to um, my website there, which will give you a um, also a page of what I do, what my background is, and also the pricing as well. I think pricing is important. Um, I, I kind of double checked with someone else who was already using a tech editor, but overseas, um, so not within Australia or New Zealand. And she said, oh yeah, look, you're on par. So I like to think that I'm on par. And if you feel that I am too expensive or not expensive enough, drop me a line, honestly. Um, you can reach me at fitsandlola at gmail.com. That's all I've got for today. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. I hope you have a great day. Happy crafting.